Welcome to part two of our interview with Richard Yu, CEO of traditional Chinese medicine supplier Yu Yansang. In this part, we'll focus on the challenges of growing a family business beyond its core market and some of the lessons Yu Yansang has learned. Now, Richard, describe for me some of the challenges that you face driving growth in your business outside of Singapore. Well, Singapore only accounts for about um, 20% of our business. So uh, the biggest part of the business is actually centered around Hong Kong and if you like, uh, greater China. The challenge for us was anticipating what would happen when we reach saturation in our core countries. What happens to us when growth slows down, which, I, which we see happening in some areas already, and where do we go? So the decision was actually taken to go into China. It's very important for us. Um, and in fact, the growth in Hong Kong today is driven by demand from China. So we get a lot of travelers coming across the border to buy in Hong Kong. The difficulty is operating within China itself. And I think it's going to take a long time, but I think we're prepared to invest and just keep plugging at it. Now you must face incredible competition in China. Yes. How do you compete? We have to know how to differentiate ourselves. Um, I think competition is about being able to differentiate. In Hong Kong, competition is also intense, maybe even more so because um, costs are higher. The, um, the risks are greater in financial terms. So um, the fact that we're able to compete in Hong Kong, I think will help us uh, compete in China as well. Because we're not a Chinese company, that gives us a very good differentiating point. Is it a differentiating because people perceive that you have higher quality? Yes, or, okay. yes, yes. With higher quality and um, our products at the moment are not made in China. And I think that's important, yeah. particularly these days in China, yeah. is that cons with concerns over product quality yeah. and food. And and so as a result, our best-selling product in, in Hong Kong um, is it, a baby product. With the one-child policy in China, the families that can afford the best quality product for the babies will come to us. One of our advantages is that we are not a Chinese company. We're not, and in fact, at the moment, we don't even manufacture in China. As far as the Chinese consumers are concerned, the fact that um, our products are made in Hong Kong is actually a plus point for them. Your core business knows TCM. Yes. Traditional Chinese medicine. What about growth in places that don't know yeah, traditional I, Chinese I, I medicine? Yeah, I think this has always been the challenge, um, how to make TCM understandable by the non-Chinese. So um, the vision going forward is that we want to leverage our knowledge in TCM into a, a, a wider space, which we call natural wellness. It's inclusive and integrative uh, approach to, to healthcare. For us, keeping well is as important, maybe more important than trying to cure someone who's already sick. Because you, if you can avoid getting sick, it's much better. And we want to try and do this using not just TCM, but which, what, whatever works. As a result, we, you know, of, the, of this vision, if you like, we've recently bought into a, a company in Australia, which is a chain of health food stores. And we want to see how we can bring our knowledge, as well as some of the TCM products, uh, into a more Western market like Australia. So that's an excellent example of an experiment within a new market to try to see receptivity to your existing products and to then expand your offerings. Correct, correct. So um, it was an opportunity. I mean, this is a, the, probably the largest chain of health food stores in Australia. So a, at least we can get um, a ready-made market, you know, instead of taking many years to try and build that up. Now, when I came to visit your new office, I was offered an excellent cup of ginseng tea. Yes. Now, how will you differentiate products like this that are available worldwide? How do you make them be special because they're part of your business? Yeah, I think the first step is to educate people uh, and really to tell them who we are and how we do things. For example, we had a couple of our franchisees from Australia visit us last month, and their reaction was, was a great learning for, for us because we got good feedback from them as to what kind of products that we have from Yu Yansang could be sold into their markets in Australia. And similarly, so you know, we would like to find products that can translate into other cultures. 
So it sounds like it's important to understand what the local needs are, to understand local tastes and preferences, and also to understand differences in the buying experience that you're trying to create. I wouldn't say it's standardized. We're, we're not like a fast food chain, but you know, there are certain elements that should be there, you know, the way in which we look after the customer, you know, the knowledge of our sales assistants, that's important. So we, we're not like a, 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 a sort of typical chain store where people go and select a product off the shelf and then there's nobody to help them. One of the challenges for many leaders from the West when they're growing in Asia is finding the right balance of confidence and humility. As an Asian leader going West, do you deal with this? We should not change our personality just because we're going from one country to another. But you have to have an understanding of local conditions. And um, obviously, we, because you're a newcomer to that place, wherever it might be, um, you cannot be too arrogant. But at the same time, you have to tell the people who you are. You, I suppose you start from a position of humility, but at the same time, you have to be very confident in your own abilities. Your advice might be to uh, forget about a 90-day plan, but instead to go in with open ears and open eyes and really understand and, and ask. Yes, it might take years. Yeah, I think, I think you have to take time to understand the market and don't expect that you can be an overnight success. So I think you just have to be very patient about it and prepare to, if you like, invest. Richard, one last question for you. What after many years leading this business and seeing it from a child, what's your advice to leaders that want to grow a family business? I think you have to have the, an intention that the, you want to pass the business on to more than one generation. There are some business founders <clears throat> that are very successful and then they find that there's no interest in the next generation. On top of that, I think it may not be necessary to continue the same business. So you can be a family business or a business family. And there are many cases where families have changed their businesses over the generations and still be successful. So you've got to keep thinking about this every generation, what you want to do. Is your, is your business the right business for the future? It may not be. So you might be disrupted by somebody else that's going to kill this business. So maybe you should think about disrupting yourself. Is it more important to preserve the family, more important or more important to preserve the business? You know, I think that that's a discussion that you've got to have within the family and that there's many different parts to this, right? So that's my advice. I think ongoing conversations, um, the family has to think about its future. And it's not just about the, the patriarch or the founder but I think he's got to include everybody else. Let's recap three lessons from Yu Yan Sang's growth experience. First, in a competitive environment, know how to differentiate yourself from the competition and play to those strengths. Second, when looking to grow into new markets, be sure to strike the right balance between confidence in your abilities and humility as a newcomer. Take the time to listen to and understand your new customers. And finally, when looking to the future of a family business, bear in mind that future success may rely on changing the direction of the business. Meeting that challenge requires a constant dialogue within the family taking into account the interests of the next generation as well as those of the current leader. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you, Alison. And thank you for joining us on Driving Growth.